what we're going to do is do put two inches of thermal buck and go up with two inches of poly iso insulation. We're using Tyvek, Bill's using Tyvek house wrap and we're going to show you how to integrate the Tyvek house wrap with the thermal buck. Okay, we just cut the openings out, so what we'll do next, we're going to cut an angle on each piece. We'll cut the straight up, then we're going to cut a 45, each corner will be a 45. That way, we have room to install the thermal buck, then we'll tape the tie back open, so we have room to install the. We're going to cut about two and a half inches at each 45 degree angle. The first piece we cut, we cut with it off to the right, the part that's on the outside of the wall facing towards you. Go ahead and put your angle on it. Make sure you're tight up against the fence. This is where the seal would go across. We're going to take 1 16th of an inch off of that because we need to leave room for sealant. Okay. We cut the thermal buck, we won't move the pieces cut yet, and we'll take the pencil and or pen and we'll make a little mark on the bed right where that cut was at. So the next piece we line right up with that mark. And we're cut to what we need. Just put the sealant on the outside of the house. Now we're going to press the WRB right into the seal. Nailed the GM pieces in now. Now we're getting ready to do the head piece. Before we do that, we've got to put more sealant on the corners. What we'll do is box the parameter, make sure we do the whole way around, and put plenty on so you get good news out. So now we're going to get ready to clamp the corners. We've installed the head piece. Uh, all the pieces of thermal buck are installed. And what we'll do is we'll use two of the roofing nails that we used to install thermal buck itself. And we'll drive them in so they're a cross section and they go across the miter joint. Once they cross and they're locked into both pieces, they make that joint incredibly strong till the sealant sets itself. Now we'll smooth out what's left of the sealant. And we've got a good joint for installing the window. Okay, now we just made a good joint of the sealant, the WRB and the thermal buck together. We've got a really good seal. Now we're going to put a layer of tape over that for an additional shingling effect of that. 
and just to help hold everything till the sealant cures. Flat till tomorrow when we install the windows. We definitely do not want to install the windows for 24 hours. We want to give the sealant time to set up. As you notice, we left the bottom open, that's for drainage, we'll do our air and water seal on the inside, that's to keep the bulk water out. The thermal bucket itself has a slope to it, sloping to the outside, so any time the window might leak, you might get condensation in the cavity, it runs right down the waterproof membrane, then can drain to the outside. Close it up and lock it then. Okay, the gaps are all good. It's plumb level. We're going to install the rest of the screws and then we'll get into the flash. Okay. We've got an overlap here. So I took time and I cut this corner, cut the corner back here. Folded the side back around and put pressure on it to get it in. And then I brought the top over the top a bit and now I'll put pressure on it to lock it into place. Now we've got a good shingled corner. Just in time, we've got the jams splashed in and everything tied in together. We just finished doing the head. We've got the sealant back behind. We've got everything in a good shingled effect. And we finally finished off by cutting up, covering up the cuts and the WRB on the top. Everything is covered. Everything's got at least a double layer of water protection and a shingle effect. So we're good to go. We're calling this install done and ready for insulation. Then uh, the cloudy. So John, we don't have to do anything with the bottom of this um, or to cover this uh, window because of the, we want to have the water be able to leak out. Right there, right there. We, what we did was we tied the WRV in underneath the thermal box. Right. So we've got a single layer. We've got that area sealed because there should be no water between the thermal box. Then the thermal box the window itself is not sealed. Because as you know, all windows are going to have water issues. Whether it's management issues where it finds a seam to get in or whether it's condensation, you're going to have water issues. So you've got to let, a, let the water have a path to escape. So we don't seal this, and that's, one of, that's another nice part of thermal box. It's got a slope on it, so it helps with your seal, your pan, and it's waterproof the whole way up. So no matter where the water starts coming in, you're protected. It comes down, comes to the bottom, and comes out. You don't have to worry about rod issues whatsoever. Nice. Your, your corners are all all sealed. You're good to go. That's, so, that's great. You've been in the industry for a long time, roughly how long? 20 years. 20 years. You've, been, you've installed a lot of wooden yeah, boxes. Uh, would you, since this is 
something that I'm thinking about right now. Did you ever install a clean window and just rig it in today? No. It saves so. a lot of time on the exterior of the building so that when we're doing the installation on a deep energy retrofit and we're foaming around these windows, we can feel confident that everything on the outside is completely sealed. So everything we do on the inside is just going to make that, that thermal boundary exactly where we are. I feel a lot more confident with the thermal buff than I do with the wood buff because, as I said, wood absorbs moisture. You're going to have some, some issues with that. Uh, it's also not as resilient. I think it's a much more resilient product. I think it's going to last a lot longer. So the, the, the payoff, I think, is substantially better.